G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm gonna give you the plan I have for the new growing season. That's right, I'm gonna take you for a tour around the veggie garden to see what we're gonna plant and how we're gonna do it. But that's not all. I'm also gonna have a chat about some new veggies that I've never tried before, such as what is strawberry spinach? Let's get into it. So I'll just put these seeds down here for now, but essentially I wanna start at the front here, these four birdies raised beds, then go back to these ones here that I made from our old deck where you are standing at the moment, back to some of these round beds, then moving down to, and you probably can't see it from there, but I've got this really, probably our oldest garden bed, a big long one here where we've got this turmeric. Can you see me? This turmeric here is starting to die back. I'm gonna let you know what I'm gonna do with that. Then behind me, we'll move on to the gourd trellis. And then behind that, where you can see the banana trees, there's several garden beds there that I'll have a chat about as well. Every veggie garden and climate is different. For us, the transition period into the new season is a little trickier than say it would be in a really cold climate where you've got these distinct seasons coming out of the snow basically into spring where everything's defrosting and you know that's your growing season. Here, I've got this transition period where some of the heat loving plants coming out of our summer are still growing and maturing like the turmeric, like galangal, and then I've got to also start new plants such as the traditional greens like broccoli and that's what I'm going to do in these four beds here. What I'm saying is I'm going to give you some general advice on what I'm doing that can be applied no matter where you live in the world. In these four beds here they're still breaking down from when I first prepared them several weeks ago. So I'm not planting out in them just yet, I'm still holding back. These beds, they needed a good help because I wasn't happy with them last season. They performed all right, but they were sandy and dry and there wasn't much life or nutrients in them. So I decided to put a whole heap of cow manure in there and the cow manure was pretty raw. So I wanted to give these beds plenty of time for that rawness to break down, to rot down. And I'm letting all sorts of animals such as worms and mealybugs and all that to do that job. And I'll give you a bit of a look at it. So if I dig right down into the middle here and let's see what we can see. So first of all, this is still very wet, but we have had a lot of rain. So this isn't necessarily because it's still too raw. Yes, there you go. Here's a worm. Not a whole heap as yet, but they might have migrated down a bit. That's actually looking pretty nice especially if I dig down and mix it around. It's starting to get there. I reckon give it another few weeks and these beds will be good to plant in. But they're not ready quite yet. And that's why I'm continually checking. I want there to be more activity and I want there to be less stickiness or heaviness to the beds. I want that to get dissolved into the sandy soil that was in there and so that it's a more well, so that's a better environment to plant plants into. But that's okay because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise some of these plants via seedlings first, and they're gonna take a few weeks, maybe two to three, before they're ready to be planted out into these beds. By then, these beds should be just right. On the other hand, these wooden beds here, they're different to these ones. They haven't been prepared, they're being rested, but you can see there's some galangal growing. I'll probably take that out and transplant it because I wanna put something else in here. We've got a bit of sorrel going to seed, which is really its season coming in now. So you can see what I mean by the crossover. Sorrel will be coming up in more vigor when it cools down a bit. Nevertheless, I don't want it in this bed because I'm probably gonna plant garlic in here. And I'm a little bit late on the garlic by about a week, but that's fine because we've had so much rain lately you might even hear me sloshing around as I walk around the garden and on the grass and that extra rain I was worried might rot the garlic bulbs in situ so I held back a little bit and I'm planting the garlic about a week later than you usually would at this time of year in the subtropics but in this bed here well you can see there's a lot of green 
and that green is starting to turn into little yellow flowers. This is a big tomato plant. Actually, there's two here. They're not a large variety. They're a small to medium variety of tomato. That's my guess. It's self-seeded because we've had a fairly mild summer. It came up early and I've just let it grow along with some potatoes and a few other crops that I've got in here. So this bed here is almost dictating to me what it wants to grow rather than me dictating to it. So now I think I'll turn it into a tomato bed rather than anything else. And at the end here, you've got this wonderful habanero chili that also came up by itself. And in a time where we've had a lot of rain, this chili plant seemed to be very happy where some of my other, especially sweet peppers, did horrible this season in a bed down here that I'll show you soon. So you take these opportunities when you can because it's come up by itself and it loves that spot and it's growing so well, I'm not going to take it out until it is showing me that it's had enough and it's far from having enough at the moment. We're gonna get some wonderful chilies out of this and make a fantastic hot sauce. Coming back around here to the sort of middle of the patch where we've got a lot of these cylinder beds. By the way, if you're hearing a bit of a hum sound, that's just our Enviro cycle working. Here, we've got a whole bunch of Egyptian spinach growing. Egyptian spinach is one of my favorite summer crops of all time because it's a very mild leaf plant. It's not bitter. It's not slimy like some other spinach substitutes that grow through a hot summer. I'm gonna leave this fella grow more. We're gonna keep using it, but it's also flowering now and it's gonna go to seed. So I've gotta keep it in this bed and let that keep growing. At the same time, we've got a whole heap of new sweet potato that's growing out of this round bed. Bed. This sweet potato I planted from store-bought tubers. They're the orange fleshed variety and they're really starting to take off now towards the end of summer. Sweet potato grows quite well through summer here but it does grow all year round and because it's growing so well in that bed I'm just going to leave that bed the way it is and once that Egyptian spinach dies back I'll take it out, we'll harvest the seeds and then we will continue that bed growing as a sweet potato bed. On this other side here we've still got a little bit of Egyptian spinach but primarily that's the end of our capsicum crop, our sweet peppers. We had a horrible season and I think it was mainly the extra rain facilitated a lot of leaf diseases and the plants could never really get going. But not only that, sweet peppers or capsicum here in Australia are a prime target for fruit fly in this area. So anything that started to get quite large got hammered and stung by fruit flies. But in that bed, I'll redo it. I'll pull out all those plants. And I think what we'll plant in there is either garlic, maybe, or we'll try something else. Perhaps one of those mystery seed packets that I'm gonna show you soon. Here we've got mint and that bed has been mint for years and years. I'll give that a bit of extra fertilizer and that's gonna bunch up beautifully once the weather cools down. These two beds here, well, I'm thinking of either strawberries or some other type of green in here. Along here, you're gonna get that hum a bit closer as I move to that Enviro cycle. You can see the end of our Jerusalem artichoke. I'll wait till they die back. Then we'll dig them up, harvest them. Then I'll refurbish these two beds. And again, we'll plant some, what we'd call winter, or in some locations, it'd be your spring, summer greens in these two. In this bed here, we've had a pretty good season of chilies, not too bad. It still has been affected by that extra rain and humidity, but nevertheless, we're still getting some really beautiful crops. But we've had chilies in here for about three years now, and I think it's time to swap them out because you don't wanna continue a crop in the one spot for most plants over and over for too long. Otherwise, it can be a harbor or a congregation of pests that creep up on that particular variety of whatever it is. I think it'll be a good spot for onions to grow for this coming season. And now we come to this really long but short raised garden bed made out of these sleepers. They're getting old. It is our oldest raised garden bed that we have and it's time for it to be changed. I've ordered some raised birdies beds. I'm getting some higher sided ones. They are going to be a bit thinner, about 1.2 meters wide. So that way I can lean over and easily reach the middle of the bed without having to step in. By the way, if you want to order some birdies beds, like I've just done, and I paid from myself, but I did get a discount because I used my discount code. And now that discount code is available, not just in the USA from Epic Gardening, but you can also get it from birdies itself in Australia. That's right, Australians, you can get it 
and also you can use the code in New Zealand as well. So the code, etc., is down below if you're interested in getting some birdie beds. You can get 5% off. Anyway, let's move on now to this raised tunnel trellis or gourd trellis, whatever you want to call it. But I grow so many things on it. And as you can see at the moment, it's inundated with pumpkins. Pumpkins, pumpkins everywhere and plenty to eat. But all good things have to come to an end because I want to get cracking in this bed and I just can't let this pumpkin vine meander and die back and slowly grow the odd pumpkin here and there when I could be using this big long bed and utilize the space much better. Last season I had beetroot and peas and celerac in here. I think this season we'll go with some beans all different types of beans that can grow beautifully on this trellis here and perhaps the same on the other side as many different types of beans as possible in here the asparagus will be dying back i'll prep that bed because it's a perennial crop and it stays there it'll probably stay there for 25 years i'll keep the asparagus there that middle bed i'm going to go sweet potato again and that last bed which looks like a bed of weeds and pumpkin that actually has chilies in it and a few eggplants. I'm gonna clean that right out. It's time to start again, grow something else in that bed, perhaps cabbage, perhaps broccoli, something like that. All right, as promised, let's just finish up with showing you some of these new crops that I'm gonna plant for the first time. Some of these you may have planted before. If you have, please enlighten me in the comments section because I'll be interested to know how they grow and what you think of them. Um, am I growing a dud or are these good? So let's start off with that first one, strawberry spinach. Hey, <laughs> how cool is that? It's a spinach, well, from the spinach family that actually grows little red berries. And the whole plant is edible, including the berries, I believe are quite nice. Well, that's what it says on the packet. Never grown it before. Let's see how it goes. The next one is some mini onion purplette and I'm thinking if they're mini I could get a quick bulb out of them before say the Hunter River Brown or those other onions like the Californian purple those type of larger ones then we've got these tomato pineapple stripes this is a yellow type beefsteak variety I've grown the yellow colossal before a good balance of tartness you know the acidity with the sweetness and a good large size and they grew well through our winter which can still get a bit cool here so I'll plant these and we'll see how they go then there's this vegetable spaghetti it's a squash and I know many of you would have grown this before and it produces a spaghetti like sort of center but it doesn't grow naturally like that you what you do is you boil the fruit or you boil the vegetable for about 20 or 30 minutes and then you cut it on and then the flesh falls away like spaghetti but i've never tried it so i want to give it a go i want to see if it will grow through the cooler part of our season so that the fruit fly don't attack it then we've got this broccoli romanesco this european is am i pronouncing that right romanesco I don't know, you can let me know in the comments section, but I haven't actually grown this before. You see this sometimes in the nurseries uh, it, as seedlings, but I actually haven't grown ahead of it. So I'm gonna give that a try. Then we've got these chop suey greens. I've never tried these either, except eating them, you know, in foreign countries or at Asian places, but I've never actually grown these types of greens. This is a chrys chrysanthemum. Is it? Is it chrysanthemum? Yeah, chrysanthemum. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. And then, this is gonna be interesting. These aren't alpine strawberries. When you first looked at this, I bet you thought, well, if you're gonna grow strawberries from seed, these must be alpine. They say they're not, which has got me thinking. So these are a supposedly good heirloom variety of strawberry that you can plant by seed that then in the future you could probably harvest the seed again if you wanted to but it'd be easier to let it put out runners and then grow it from runners now i've grown 
strawberries from seed before but only the alpine variety but this took my eye when I saw that this wasn't an alpine variety so I'm going to plant them I'm going to sow them and be very careful with them because strawberries aren't easy to grow from seed and we'll see how they turn out you know I love growing new plants I think as a home gardener this is one of the advantages we have over people who shop at the supermarket because the supermarket will only have a select variety sometimes they'll go out on a limb and they'll introduce some quirky variety of something you know some vegetable that isn't the norm and it'll probably sit there on the shelf and not many people will buy it because you know people a lot of people don't like change but us gardeners I personally love trying all different types of things. It's one of the fun things about food gardening for me is trying different types of plants and seeing what they taste like and experiencing that new taste sensation and that satisfaction of growing something that you just can't readily buy from the supermarket, something that is quite rare and different. I just love it. and so do my boys and Nina we all love trying new things and that's what backyard gardening can do for you it can get you out trying different stuff and experiencing some things that other people don't it's a bit like skydiving or going on a great ride or going to a fantastic location that not many people have been before and you can talk about that and you can experience it yourself and enjoy it that's the type of feeling I get from trying something new. And luckily, there are plenty of new plants and vegetables to try. For example, there are over 20,000 different types of tomatoes. And I reckon I've only tried maybe several hundred. So I've got a long way to go in just tomatoes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a very different variety and planned thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and share this video around if you enjoyed it because that helps my channel out. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Which one out of all these am I most excited about growing? I reckon this strawberry spinach. If it looks like that, that is going to be cool and I can't wait to taste the leaves and the berries. Lost for words. Gotcha. <laughs>